Hello, my name is Michael. I'm a podiatrist and I form part of the diabetes management team. So I'm going to explain to you today how diabetes can affect your feet. If your sugar levels are poorly controlled for a long period of time, the blood flow to your feet can become impaired and you can have reduced healing capacity. Injuries which should heal on the diabetic foot sometimes don't. Also, if your sugar levels are poorly controlled for a long period of time, the nerves in your feet can die off to a certain degree and you can develop a type of numbness. The concern here being that you could possibly injure your foot and not feel it. The injury will not be attended to and progress. What can happen is an ulcer can arise, which can get infected, and that can progress further to gangrene. And at that point in time, the toe, the foot, or the leg is in jeopardy. What I'd like to talk to you today about is a few strategies to hopefully avoid these complications arising. The message is one of common sense. If you look after your feet, the chances of problems are greatly reduced. When you see your podiatrist, he or she will do some simple tests to assess these things in your feet, such as your blood flow and your nerve function. For nerve function, your podiatrist will use a simple piece of fishing line which bends when it exerts 10 grams of pressure against your skin. That is an indicator as to whether or not you would feel an injury. Also, he or she may use a tuning fork against your skin on your feet to see if you can feel vibration. As far as vascular assessment or blood flow assessment goes, your podiatrist will check your pulses, will look at your feet for such signs as hair loss, colour, temperature change, and your podiatrist may ask you a few questions regarding pain you may experience in your feet or your legs, either at rest or with activity. If we find complications, we may refer you on to more specialised attention. General advice your podiatrist will give you would include such things as avoiding walking barefoot outside and indoors at all times because your feet would be unprotected. Also, avoid wearing thongs. We would ask you to wear shoes that fit you and protect your feet. The aim here is to avoid injury. Also, monitoring your feet. If your nerve function in your feet is not 100% and you're not feeling an injury, you can make up for that deficit with your eyes. An injury you cannot feel, you should be able to see. So daily we want you to check your feet for injuries. If you have trouble seeing the bottom of your feet, you could use a mirror. To check the reflection. You may also be at risk of fungal infection. In the diabetic foot fungal infection occurs in two forms. Firstly you may get tinea in between your toes. The concern we have here is that tinea can break the skin down and that is a chance for infection. The advice if you start to see tinea, the treatment, would include such things as antifungals, over-the-counter medications from the chemist, and such simple measures as drying between your toes. 
With this in mind, methylated spirits is a good agent as it will dry the area out. The second form of fungal infection we may see on the diabetic foot involves the toenails. If you start to see a yellowy or brown discoloration of your toenails, it may be the first sign that there is fungal action. The concern with fungal infection in the toenail is it can actually make your toenail thicken quite dramatically, over a centimetre thick. The concern here is that pressure on the toenail can damage the nail bed underneath and cause wounds there. If you notice discoloration in your toenail, you should consult your GP or podiatrist because there are treatments available. Diabetes can also affect your sweat gland function. Now your sweat glands on your feet produce sweat but they also produce an oily secretion that keeps your skin moist and supple and healthy. However, if the sweat glands dysfunction and that oily substance is no longer produced, we will see the feet dry out quite dramatically. And when that happens, the skin will weaken and it will break. What we advise in this event is that you make use of moisturisers. Sorbeline is the preferred option and if you use that daily it should keep your skin healthy. With your daily monitoring of your feet you may notice injuries. If you detect a cut or a scratch the advised first aid involves saline or salt water bathing and covering the wound daily with a non-stick fabric backed dressing such as cutie plast. This dressing regime should be repeated daily. But let's say in a few days time that wound hasn't healed and it's infected. The advice at this stage is to see your GP and it is not an overreaction. Advise toenail cutting practice. Try to avoid cutting down the sides of the toenails. This may generate ingrown toenails which are a common cause of infection. When you cut your toenails, try to cut them straight across the front. If you are having trouble managing your toenails, if you are drawing blood, if you can't reach your feet, if your eyesight is poor, this may be an occasion when you consult your podiatrist. Another reason you may consult your podiatrist is if you are getting corns or callus on your feet. Your podiatrist is skilled at removing these lesions and can also give some strategies or suggest some strategies to prevent them reoccurring. As a minimum, you should see your podiatrist annually, where he or she will do the assessment of the blood flow and nerve function in your feet. It is important that you purchase shoes that protect your feet. With this in mind, you should go to a shoe shop where they're going to actually measure your feet and fit them. Any new shoes should be broken in cautiously. Wear them for an hour or so the first time, two hours the second time. Gradually wean yourself on. If your shoes are incorrectly fitted, they can cause a lot of damage. Features we would look for in shoes include a lot of clearance around the toes so there is no pressure, no rubbing against the toes. As the shoes wear, it is important that you check them for rough spots inside. And also, check inside the shoes for stones or foreign bodies that may be in there because they can cause damage. It is advisable also that you purchase your shoes late in the day because as the day goes on, your feet often swell. Buy the shoes in the morning when your feet are sw smaller. In the afternoon they'll be too tight and will cause damage. Also with regard to socks, etc. If you wear a hole in your socks, resist the urge to mend them because this is a point of pressure and you'll actually be creating a seam in a point of pressure and that can cause further injury. Your best advice if your socks wear is to throw them out and have them replaced. People with diabetes are advised to purchase their socks from chemists or shoe shops where they have specialised socks for people with diabetes. These socks have reduced elasticity, so no tourniquet effect, and they have minimal seams to reduce trauma against the toes.